Hello, welcome back to the YouTube gaming stage right here at PAX Prime. I'm your host, Daniel Dwyer from GameSpot.com. And oh my god, Cliff Blazinski is here. What's up, dude? Hello, sir. Pleasure I didn't to realize meet you. this would be projected. Hello. I am Bruce. Hey. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you. Uh, you guys are here, which means you're ready to talk about your new video game, Bosky. It's, it's out there, you have a name, you have a, a trailer, and now gameplay. We've been teasing gamers for like a year, like, no, we got a little, here's a little gun, here's a little character, here's a screenshot that looks like a, a Bigfoot video, yeah. right? And then finally this morning, 6 a.m., boom, you want some gameplay, you got some fucking gameplay. That's awesome, yeah. nice, uh, nice thing to wake up to, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, we're still half awake right now, it's like <laughs> riding the adrenaline of of our ratio of like people who love the game to trolls is about 30 to 1, which Great. is pretty impressive. Nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, Lawbreakers, uh, what's it all about? T t for folks who haven't seen the trailer yet. Uh, it's a sci-fi first-person shooter set 100 years in the future. Uh, it's two sides, organized law enforcement versus the organized gangs. Imagine if Cyrus and the Warriors had ever been killed. Right. Old school reference right there. And they're all breaking the law of gravity. So law versus breakers, 100 years in the future. Crazy environmental gravity, all sorts of inverted gravity, zero gravity, low gravity, uh, grappling hooks, uh, jetpacks, and, and all sorts of things we haven't even revealed yet. Mm. Uh, when people think about a Cliff Fizinski game, you go back to like well, Gears of War with the, the chainsaw gone, you go back to Unreal Tournament and it's just like... Jazz dozens Jack Rabbit? Dozens, yeah, well, okay, maybe so. <laughs> dozens and dozens, <laughs> dozens of like crazy guns and different like like mutators and ways to play the game. Yeah. What's the sort of the main mission uh, for, for this game? I well, mean, when I look at what's in the market, I, it's the whole thing of like counter-programming. They do this in movies when like, mm. if there's going to be a manly action movie hitting that weekend, they'll deliberately release a Nicholas Sparks rom-com or something yeah. like that, right? So when we were doing Unreal, we saw Quake was deep, dark dungeons without a lot of color. We, we did Unreal, which was bright colors mm. and kind of more fantastical worlds. And here, when we look at what we're doing with Lawbreakers, right now, this character-based 515 first-person shooter, it's really blowing up. And I look at the old grimdark of Killzone that he did, Gears that I did. Yeah. It was like, war is hell. War never changes, or maybe it does. And then over here, you have League and Overwatch, which are super bright and Pixar-looking, and that's yeah. cool, but that's not us. Mm. Yeah. We're kind of halfway between the two, and we think there's room for that. Mm. Heck, so when you were first uh, coming up with, with Lawbreakers, uh, the, the space was kind of a little bit different because, like you said, now there is a couple of more of these games, and like where Randy Pitcher is going to be on later, to, talking about his game, and like it, when you do, when you haven't sat down and played these games, sometimes it's difficult to really differentiate between them. Yeah. So, like, what's the main way you guys are like differentiating Lawbreakers? What kind of makes it stand I apart? I think there's uh, the art style first and foremost. I think it's our variable gravity that we're playing with in our movement. Uh, I think when it comes to our universe. You know, I appreciate a lot of what these games are doing right now, where it's a space gorilla next to a tree ant next to an ice elf. That's yeah. their thing. I mean, it's League, it's all of that, it's cool. But I wanted something that was a little more cohesive for our world, where, you know, you have organized law enforcement, organized gangs, it looks like good guys versus bad guys, and even within that, there's sub-factions that make mm. sense. So you have multiple people who are Japanese Yakuza on the breakers. You have multiple people who are the, the futuristic DEA on the law side, instead of just fuck it, everything works. Yeah, and a nice diverse uh, uh, character spread as well. As yeah, exactly, and I mean, you know, when we started building this game with our first person shooter heritage, we realized we had to have something character based, mm. but we didn't want to do a MOBA. MOBAs are great, Smite is actually my jam, but there's so many out there, like, if you're making a MOBA right now, good luck, because it's going to be tough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the, the big thing for me was as well that you know we wanted to do something that's more realistic, right? So, but not be constrained as much as we were in all these kind of super realistic games, yeah. right? Where it's all kind of like real weapons or real bullet patterns and all AR that. AR-15. You know? Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> my last game was Battlefield Hardline, right? And it's crazy, right? You can't do anything because everybody will be yeah. you know, analyzing these guns, etc. So, you know, I'd like. That's kind of enabling that, that the crazy fantasy behind it that enables a lot of kind of creativity that actually goes back all the way to the first first person shooters that were way that yeah. were way more creative like double jumps and dodges and wall jumps and yeah when there was no rules yeah when when yeah. you weren't trying to yeah. imitate real life which this generation of streaming and and YouTube gamers mm. don't remember because yeah. they're too young when yeah. we announced the game and this the uh, gamer tweeted me he's like oh you got the Team Fortress 2 rocket jump I'm like give me the <laughs> rocket jump <laughs> yeah yeah. Like, come on, but that, it's okay, because every, every 10 and 15 years, you can taste something that's older, do a new spin on it, mm. and it seems new to an entire generation. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the movement aspect, because that to me is very much something I remember playing Unreal Tournament back in 99, was that you could like do double taps to the side, yeah. and like, dodges and whatnot, yep. and there were jumps. So talk about the gravity. The moon's exploded, it's yep. fucked gravity. What's going on, and how does the player interact with that? Well, so as I said, gravity is the, the sum of its parts. It's the way that players have their own abilities, such as dodging, mm. uh, double jumping, dashing, gra grappling hooks, uh, jetpacks like tribes and all that. It's in the environment as well, so in, in the levels we're working on, there's often one unique gravity zone. In the level that we're showing off tomorrow on Sunday, there's a lunar gravity section in the middle. Oh, wow. And the beauty of this 
is that when you go through it, you can rocket jump and get extra momentum, but in this game, you can blind fire in first person. Oh. So it's kind of like, you know, when Sandra Bullock used the fire extinguisher in Gravity, mm. you can kind of project yourself forward. And so you see in the gameplay trailer, uh, Breacher shoots behind him. Yeah. Not only is he pushing himself forward with the force of the bullets, but he's also taking out Kitsune. So the, the whole thing is, the combination of the parts of this game, the abilities, the characters, the verbs, yields great YouTube videos and animated GIFs. Mm. And it's interesting that you're going to be that dangerous with level design as well, because like not to constantly be harping back with my nostalgia fix on the tournament, but like levels where there was like unique areas like, oh, get trapped in that room, and then you, yeah. you get inflated. And I mean, whatnot. we want to find that halfway point between you know crazy abstract quake castles, but I don't want to do the battlefield has to be a city street. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like a city street, if you think about it, is actually a very boring play space. It's a trench. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. there's something in the fiction that I reworked, I'm not ready to reveal, where there's no, no cars on the streets anymore in the future. It's very walkable, open, green spaces. Yeah, excellent. And, and I think the other thing, you're right, so we are so fair, very vertical that, uh, you know, there was a question on, uh, on Twitter the, uh, the other uh, day, like, you know, is, is, the, uh, is the grappling hook able to hook up to everything? Like, yeah. yeah, you know, you can actually go up the roofs and kind of go beyond and go around the level and do all these kind of crazy things. Yeah. So, you know, we're kind of completely free in that, in that sense as well. Uh, anyone saying you've stolen the grappling hook from Quake 2 multiplayer? Well, I mean, <laughs> it goes back to three-wave CTF. Okay, you know, yeah. And most gamers these days are too young to remember that, and anybody who's old enough to remember it is happy to have it come back. And it's not just a simple grapple, go to that location. It's some like Spider-Man 2, like yeah. swingy type shit. Momentum. Where you, you can act, hit on the side of a pole and then swing around and gain momentum. And even grapple to enemies as you saw in the video. And we found out two weeks ago you can grapple to teammates. Oh, so right. we had three Kitsunis. The first one goes out, the second one grapples, and they all just like kind of daisy chain across the map. And that's the kind of emergent gameplay we found with it. When you hold the control button and you blind fire, if you're a breacher and you have the shoulder mounted rocket launcher mm. and you hit Q to launch your rockets, it fires backwards. <laughs> the programmers are like, I don't remember coding that, but it just works. Just have em yeah, that's, em that's cool emergence. You emergent know? game design. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, Put design. as many verbs together and see what happens. And then <laughs> let users break it. Uh, so let's talk about the characters then. Um, how do they break down? It must be difficult to sort of, you know, people think about these things in terms of like, oh, assassin, tank, healer, like that's the way yeah. they think about classes or whatnot. How are you breaking down these different characters? I mean, if when our audience talks about somewhat realistic, it's like we wanted aspirational characters that people could feel represented by. Mm. You know, when you see Kitsune, she looks like this cool, badass girl, but she also has, you can kind of, it's a little Kill Bill DNA on that, right? Mm. Uh, when you look at Kronos, he's the big boy, the almost Bane looking dude. You know, you can kind That's of me. identify with it. Yeah. yeah. I tease Randy Pitchford, I'm like, sentient mushroom, man. You have a sentient mushroom, what's up with that? <laughs> it's cool, though, but that's, that's that direction for that game. That's that Alice in Wonderland craziness. Yeah. We're not that, and that's okay. So is it is it a player on player, 5v5? What's the, what are the modes going to be like? 5v5, we're showing off one mode tomorrow and Sunday. It's essentially called Overcharge, mm. where in the middle of the map, there's a battery filled with this mysterious element you're trying to charge up. Bring it back Unobtainium. to your base. Hey, you know, it's, uh, it's a useful thing in science fiction. Yeah. Teridium. Yeah. And uh, once you charge it fully in your base, you score a point. However, the battery can be taken out of your base at any point and brought to the enemy's base. Mm, okay. You have to stand on it for a few seconds and get rid of the shield, kind of like capture and hold. What we found is there's some crazy back and forth or last second saves and everyone's punching each other in the shoulder and yelling. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, when I think about multi multiplayer games, you often had like lots of different modes, very untraditional modes as well. Going back to thinking about yep. Unreal Tournament and even Gears of War, like yep. pioneered stuff that hadn't been around. You find that time. generally, over, unless you're Call of Duty with a billion people installed base, if you have a medium-sized installed base, three game types is usually the sweet yeah. spot, right? Yeah, because uh, you know the, the, the other modes are not played anymore, right? And I think that that's the same thing with levels, right? We can release 50 levels with 20 modes, and then you know, yeah, what do people play? Well. Team Deathmatch yeah. on one map. Dust, yeah. Dust, Dust, Dust 2, two exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dust, Dust 2 and Morpheus. <laughs> yeah. so. Um, so, what was this? I guess, like you're doing a lot here that's different. You're doing, you know, on the face of it, you've got different characters, the way that you're utilizing gravity for the missions and whatnot, levels and whatnot, and then different game modes as well. Is there, is there a worry that maybe if you're doing too much, you're like almost like the players won't know what to grab onto. What's, what's the sort of the... the grapple, the I, I see. Oh, you yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you just gave me well, that Well, I mean, from a production standpoint, we're 40 people. Right. right? Oh, so we want to stay team. small and medium. It's, it's only one year in. So we built this team as we build the game. And what, what we have, I'm pretty proud of, the, of what everybody's accomplished. That said, each character is almost, could be their own star of their own game. Like, this, this could be the dude in Dishonored, mm. right? So we're finding that uh, one of the things in order to get the game done is, you know, we need to be symmetrical. So we're going to be a symmetrical game. You know, when you play the game here at, at the offsite at PAX, 
you know, there, it's Kronos and Kitsune on one side of the breakers. It's Breacher and Maverick on the law, massively asymmetrical. The final version will be much more symmetrical. There'll be one on each side, but thema thematically different. Yeah. yeah. And, and the levels are uh, symmetrical as well, completely. Yeah. So, you know, there's no advantages on, the, on each side, right? It's a complete mirror, so, mm. yeah. That's it. Um, so, how many characters do you think you're going to have? Obviously, you've unveiled. How many was in the trailer? Was there five different characters? There's four in the trailer. So We're targeting, you know, for each side, five, six-ish, but this game's going to be a living product. Mm. You know, I already have ideas for the characters and the, the, the gangs and the factions that I want to introduce a year out. Yeah. You know, and, and new game mechanics and completely ruin the game's balance so you guys can all yell at us and tell us we suck so we can then fix it again. Uh -huh. Are you going to go down the esports route as well? You know, competitive gaming has changed a lot since. You got to walk before you run, man. Yeah. I mean, esports is huge. Everyone's trying to push it too soon. Don't put the cart before the horse. Get a version of the game out, keep building that community, and then hopefully make the magic leap. Mm. What's it like for both of you, considering you're coming from these massive franchises you've like basically created and, and like evolved over years to then be back at square one starting uh, something new again? Yeah. I love it, right? So, so instead of having to run like 300 people teams <laughs> where everything is kind of digested and, and the, the, the tiniest blocks and there's no creativity anymore, it feels mm. like, right? Because it all needs to be produced, etc. Now, we, right, we have such a small team that everybody's inter interacting with each other very closely. So if somebody codes a new feature, right? They're, they're kind of like, hey, I can do it like this. And they walk over to the designer and they can spin on it and present to Cliff. It's like, oh, amazing, mm. let's do it, right? And, th and that kind of dynamism is, 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 is really great. But I think, you know, the key thing as well for us is, is just focus, right? We focus on, on, on the thing and we focus on, you know, you know, arena multiplayer, right? We're not doing single player, we're not doing cutscenes, we're not making the game, you know, require 200 people. Mm. So, you know, and we can always grow kind of later, but, you know, the core of the game is that multiplayer, right? What, what do people play in Call of Duty and, and Battlefield and Killzone and, you know, for the longest time? Mm. Um, multiplayer, right? So that's what we're focusing on. And then, you know, 40 people purely on, on multiplayer it's a good team, right? It's a, it's, and it's a decent size. You almost have half of them here. There's like a bunch of them um, hanging out. Yeah, I mean, as I was saying before we started, you know, look out for people who are wearing the Break Free shirts for kind of uh, information on the offsite. We got little cards to get you in there. Uh, although it's first come, first serve. It's one of those things, they sit in front of a, a screen all day long. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll have a meeting. Like when they go to this show and they see people be hands on with it, it's momentum that carries you th through the rest of the year. And the thing I love about this guy is we, we tend to have a little bit of coarse language at the uh, at the, at the uh, the studio, yeah. he has two phrases that are very useful. I suggest learning in life. Okay. The first one is "fuck it." Somebody fuck say, it. "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this," and like, "Fuck it, I'll code it. Let's All do right. it." This, it don't, oh my God! What's management gonna say? Oh my God! And the other one is if somebody's wasting our time or if there's some BS, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, ain't nobody got time for that. Fuck it and fuck off. Yeah, they're decision useful. making. Exactly. It, mu it must feel good that way because you you probably have a lot more ownership over something when it's 40 people. Like I'm sure you guys do as creative leads, but like for the rest of your team as well. Well, I mean, at the start of the game. You have to be a bit defiant, where I'm like, look, these are the three pillars. Mm. If you don't like it, fuck off. <laughs> Nobody's going, I want to make a dinosaur fighting game. I like MOBAs. I like this. And like, no, this is the game. Here's where we're going. And it started as my baby. It's now a year end. It's become the company's teenager. Yeah. And when it comes out for pre-alpha release and final release, it's going to be the community's adult. That's amazing. And you guys already have a playable here. Uh, well, not here, but off-site. Yeah, off-site. It's at uh, 128 uh, Belmont Ave East. Cool. Oh, can uh, random people just wander yeah, up? Yeah, just and walk right up. Um, it's this really Saturday, interesting Sunday. venue. Yeah. Feels like it's a sex club by night or something, but don't right. judge it. Is ignore, it? Ignore the horse masks. <laughs> Is it? It does have a bunch of weird masks. All right. Like some eyes wide shut shit. Okay, I might go down there later. But the venue's gorgeous, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just for research. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I can expense this, right, Mr. Yeah, Lundstam? exactly. Um, uh, I guess, uh, when will this be playable then for people? Uh, like, just, it's kind of crazy to be asking this question, but you're already, it's only been a year and you're showing it to some people. So are you, when are you looking at alpha? We are data? steadily collecting like relevant information for those who would want to be in a pre-alpha through our mailing list and everything like that. Um, and there will be a, kind of a mailing for early access for gamers, hopefully early next year. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. Uh, we don't know if something works. Get it in your hands. Yeah. What's it coming out on? Uh, PC first. PC first. And, and then I think Sony I'm and Microsoft are currently yelling at each other. Oh, really? Uh, we're only 40 people. <laughs> you know, I, I still love consoles. You know, if the time is right, we'll find the right partner to help us port it. We can't do it ourselves. So we'll talk to Sony, you know, talk to Phil, talk to Adam. We'll see if we can make something happen. Mm. Uh, finally, before I let you guys go, I'm sure you got a bunch of people to talk to. Uh, what does it feel like to finally be able to talk about this? And is there a lot of pressure because you're both coming from you know storied franchises that we'll talk about? Well, for he's 20 years. he's cool as a cucumber. We did our Twitch uh, Twitch live stream to announce the game, 
And you know, normally when I do this shit, it's like, hey, what's up? And I'm, they're all watching me, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat for like two days. Because, I mean, there's something romantic about the fact that we made Jazz Jackrabbit together over 20 years oh, ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's know. how we met. Oh, yeah. wow, right. I was yeah. like 17. He was yeah. like 19. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot younger. It's a long time ago. Yeah. And, uh, and getting and the then team back together. He hit me up, and I was like, dude, like, the thing about Ardian is he can run the company, but also a programmer can't bullshit him. Yeah. He's like, oh, you, you, that's impossible. Screw you. I'll code it now. Mm. And there's a tremendous amount of respect that people get for that. And uh, I think we have a great kind of, you know, team going on right now. And uh, the feeling of, of having something new, it's like Pixar. If we're not nervous, we're not doing our jobs. And it is so satisfying yeah. to see this. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. It's, uh, you know, and, and the thing is, right, it's been such an exhilarating ride already because, you know, it's a year, right, since we started. Yeah. And a year ago, there was nobody in the office, right? We didn't have desks, right? Wow. That kind of stuff. Computers were not there. People were on laptops. And, you know, so during that year, we kept on hiring people. They were actually able to do this, you know, in that time frame, right? If you look at any other game, like, you know, Horizon, you know, I, I worked yeah. on that before I left the Guerrilla Games. That was five years ago. Wow, really? So that was under, you know, you know, undercover for such a long time, mm. right? The same thing with all the other games. And, and, you know, we're already kind of showing a lot more, engaging with the community a lot more. And this is the start, really, right? Now we can talk about games. We can talk, you know, get people in, playing, right, through telemetry. Dude, in development, we're, developers are the smartest people you'll ever meet, but they're very insecure about their intelligence. Mm. So I can pitch Batman to anybody, and they'd be like, that's dumb. <laughs> and like, no, like when you get Scott Snyder or Christopher Nolan on it, they make it amazing. Yeah. So anything, everything is in the execution. Developers just need to sometimes say, that could go either way, try it, we'll, we'll, we'll iterate and be quick and quick and we'll make the call. Awesome. Uh, and as gamers, we're all very fascinated and excited to see uh, how Lawbreakers turns out. Thank you so much. Uh, right. I have a pleasure to meet you, sir. Cliff Lezinski, pleasure. Uh, for all the folks who are watching online, uh, what else are you teasing out over the weekend? Because do you have more trailers coming out? Uh, no, this is going to be it for a little while, but now that the, everyone's going to see the build, um, at our offsite, 128 Belmont Ave East, uh, when you finish your session, after, if you enter your Twitter handle, it's going to generate an anime, um, animated GIF of your best kill. Oh, cool. And auto dump it to your Twitter if you want. Excellent. So that's the thing. It creates awesome animated GIFs. And now we're actually going to be able to just stream the game from our studio. Perfect. So you're not just going to see the gameplay trailer you saw. You're going to see Scott, our amazing LD, messing people up. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Are you going to play uh, Unreal Tournament when it comes out as well, that new one? Uh, sure. I mean, I live streamed Gears with the wife. <laughs> yeah, good so, and it, That was cool. So I'm going to start getting into streaming a little bit more often. I need to do it more. It's just you can't ignore it. Cool. Will Dog Huge be involved? Uh, Dog Huge is getting a little old. He okay. may be, uh, little Evie might be. She's okay. the one who might be in my face, licking up on my face. Smashing. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. Right, yeah, we really appreciate okay. it. And uh, thanks to everyone for uh, watching our show here today. Uh, we'll be back real soon right here on the YouTube Gaming Show at PAX Prime. Stay tuned.